Hello young champions. My name is Anket Agreri and I'm working with UNDP in chemicals and waste area, supporting global environmental programs on ozone protection, mercury mainstreaming priorities and green chemistry. It is my pleasure to give you a talk here on the importance of ozone layer, its protection and also its impact on climate change and global warming. Earth, the only planet with life, is a scientific and a stunning marvel. This small blue and green planet we call home is a very special and unique place. We live on the only planet in our solar system and possibly in the galaxy where life is known to exist. What makes life possible? It is the atmosphere, a blanket of different gases that perform different functions. The atmosphere is a mixture of gases and particles that surround our planet. When seen from space, the atmosphere appears as a thin seam of dark blue light on a curved horizon. On a hot summer's day, we put sunscreen on our skin to protect it from the sun. And it does a really great job, right? Well, Earth has something similar to sunscreen. It is called the ozone layer. The ozone layer exists in the stratosphere, which protects Earth from the sun's harmful ultraviolet radiation and therefore protects our environment, health and economy. The ozone layer is vital to life on the planet's surface. It acts as a filter and prevents the harmful ultraviolet B radiation from reaching the earth. It is an invisible layer of gas high above the earth's surface in what's known as the stratosphere and it acts as a protective shield absorbing harmful ultraviolet or UV radiation from the sun, especially the radiation which causes sunburn. This layer with the good ozone present stretches between 10 km and 50 km above the Earth's surface. Without the ozone layer, too much ultraviolet radiation would reach Earth harming us along with the animals, plants, and all other living organisms. So you see, the ozone layer plays a really important role protecting all life on the Earth. The ozone layer is made up of ozone molecules, which consists of three oxygen atoms. These molecules are produced and destroyed in the stratosphere all the time. UV radiation breaks up the ozone molecules, converting them back into oxygen. So, but something catastrophic is happening here. In the 1970s, scientists picked up the problem. Ozone molecules were being destroyed by gases from chemicals that people had made. These chemicals are called ozone depleting substances, and the worst of them are CFCs, the chlorofluorocarbons. Hyperindustrialization has led to stable man-made chemicals like chlorine and bromine react reaching the stratosphere, which react with the ozone, undergoing a complex series of catalytic reactions, all triggering the destruction of the ozone layer. At that time, CFCs were, were being used in thousands of products. People used every day from air conditioners to fridges, aerosol cans, and even the inhalers used by the asthma patients. When a CFC molecule reaches the stratosphere, it absorbs ultraviolet radiation, causing it to break down and release its chlorine atoms. Just one chlorine atom can destroy over 100,000 ozone molecules, and that's really bad news. When lots of these CFCs were emitted in the atmosphere, ozone molecules were being destroyed much faster than they were being created, disturbing the natural balance, and this eventually caused a big problem. Humans have released chlorofluorocarbons, CFCs, halons, and methyl bromides into the atmosphere causing ozone depletion by breaking up ozone molecules. CFCs have been used in many applications, including refrigeration, air conditioning, aerosol propellant, and cleanser or cleaners for metallic and electronic components. These chemicals are called ozone depleting substances 
or ODS. And this also includes chlorofluorocarbons, halons, carbon tetrachloride, methyl chloroform, hydrochlorofluorocarbons, methyl bromide. So these are commonly used in refrigerators, air conditioners, fire extinguishers, rigid foam, aerosol propellants, soil fumigation structures, and imported or exported goods. It, not, it would not be wrong to say that all the products we see from our eyes or the products we use in our daily lives are made from some of these substances which causes ozone layer destruction. The foam which was produced from one of the hydrochlorofluorocarbons has application in all the appliances to name a few are air conditioners, refrigerators, the kitchenwares items such as casseroles, the ice cream trucks, buildings insulation, pipe supports, roof insulation, carrying the medicines and supplies, food storage, and many, many more applications. All these applications have traces of ozone depleting substances. What are the harm from these chemicals or these ozone depleting substances? Ozone layer depletion increases the amount of ultraviolet rays that reaches the earth's surface. It leads to a loss of forestry, agriculture, marine life. Absence of ozone can damage several parts of the eye and can also lead to cataract. Ultraviolet radiations can also increase the risk for skin cancer in humans. If the ozone depletion continues, health issues like cataract, skin cancer, etc., along with adverse impacts on agriculture, forestry, and marine life are bound to take place, threatening the mankind. It goes without saying, without the ozone layer, everyone, everything is destroyed. The ozone hole was one of the first events that made people realize how our choices were destroying the planet. Ozone hole was first detected over the Antarctic region in 1985, a huge hole in the ozone layer. But don't worry, what happened next was amazing. The whole world worked together to figure out a way to save the ozone layer. In 1985, the Vienna Convention, an international treaty on the protection of the ozone layer, was set in motion under which the Montreal Protocol was set up in 1987. Countries took immediate action. And 35 years ago, in 1987, the Montreal Protocol was signed to eliminate or phase out the substances that harm the ozone layer. Starting with 24 nations, it is today the only UN treaty that has been ratified by all 190 eight UN members. What was the goal? The goal was to repair and protect the ozone layer by phasing out production and consumption of ozone depleting substances for all the end implications. On 18th March 1991, India became a party to the Vienna Convention and ratified the Montreal Protocol on 19th June 1992. It is also the it is also the most successful environmental treaty. Through dedicated actions by all the countries, we have successfully managed to reduce global consumption of ozone depleting substances by nearly 98%. This is the kind of success story we need to replicate across other environmental treaties to protect our planet. With all these efforts, the ozone layer started healing, but the story doesn't end here. We replaced the CFCs, the chlorofluorocarbons in our freezes and spray products with other alternative substances that includes hydrofluorocarbons or HFCs. But while these don't, uh, while these HFCs don't damage the ozone layer, they turned out to be powerful greenhouse gases, which affect our climate. We needed to change the protocol to phase these out too. And so we added the Kigali Amendment in 2016. 
ozone protection efforts have contributed significantly to slowing climate change by avoiding 135 billion tons of CO2 equivalent emissions between 1990 to 2010. And they are also increasing energy efficiency by greening our energy systems, especially in the cooling sector, which is important for agriculture and medicine. Set up by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, the ozone cell became responsible for implementing the Montreal Protocol guidelines. It has started with the development of a country-wide ODS phase-out program in 1992, which was, late, which was later updated in 2006. Since then, India has been successful across its implementation plans and has eliminated production and consumption of CFCs, CTC, halons, methyl bromide, and methyl chloroform for the control purposes. Under SCFC phase-out, India prioritized SCFC 141B removal, often used as a blowing agent in foam manufacturing, identified to have the highest ozone depleting potential among all the SCFCs. India has been one of the leaders in the implementation of the Montreal Protocol. The country has phased out 53% of the total SCFCs so far, which is a significant share in achieving the targets under the protocol. India has also implemented many ODS phase-out projects that have helped industries in smooth and systematic transition to ozone-friendly alternatives. UNDP has been working closely with the ozone cell in the ministry since 1992 to implement the Montreal Protocol, and we are proud to support the ministry in these initiatives. At the end, I would like to say that scientists, policymakers, and governments work together to control and phase out ozone depleting substances, and it worked. The ozone layer is healing, but we have to cap keep at it. With these words, I hope you must have gained something useful and uh, you can be torch bearers to make your uh, make aware your peers and friends about the ozone layer and its importance. Thank you for patiently listening up. Earth, the only planet with life, is a scientific, stunning marvel. What makes life possible is the atmosphere a blanket of different gases that perform different functions. The ozone layer exists in the stratosphere, which protects Earth from the sun's harmful UV radiation. Hyper-industrialization has led to stable man-made chemicals like chlorine and bromine reaching the stratosphere, which react with the ozone, undergoing a complex series of catalytic reactions, all triggering ozone destruction. These chemicals called ozone-depleting substances, or ODS, also include chlorofluorocarbons, halons, carbon tetrachloride, methyl chloroform, hydrochlorofluorocarbons, methyl bromide. If the ozone depletion continues, health issues like cataract, skin cancer, etc., along with adverse impacts on agriculture, forestry, and marine life are bound to take place. In 1985, the Vienna Convention, an international treaty on the protection of the ozone layer, was set in motion, under which the Montreal Protocol was set up in 1987. The goal? To repair and protect the ozone layer by phasing out production and consumption of ODS for end applications. On 18th March 1991, India became a party to the Vienna Convention and ratified the Montreal Protocol on 19th June 1992. Set up by the Ministry of Environment, Forest and Climate Change, the ozone cell became responsible for implementing the Montreal Protocol guidelines. Around 175 foam manufacturing enterprises, including several MSMEs, participated and switched to non-ODS and low GWP alternatives such as cyclopentane and ecomate. Complete support was provided to MSMEs for 8 CFC 141B phase-out through the Central Institute of Petrochemicals Engineering and Technology under the Department of Chemicals and Petrochemicals. Today, India is proudly the first among all developing countries 
to have achieved complete phase out of 8 CFC 141B in the foam manufacturing space. All this was made possible because of the government's efforts. Thank you. Thank you very much and all the best.